Hello Mini Pilots! After the new upgrade we can now shoot at 24 frames a second. How big a deal is this and what frame rate should we be shooting at? In this video we're going to go over the benefits of shooting at different frame rates and ultimately find out the best frame rate to be shooting at. Let's get started. Now before we get too deep into it I just want to uh, point out that your Mavic Mini actually shoots at 23.976 frames a second. Now this is due to the early days of broadcasting, they needed to change the frame rate by 0.1% to avoid any technical problems. As it's evolved, rather than rechanging all the frame rates, they've just maintained it. So whenever I say 24 frames a second in this video, I actually mean 23.796. Now, I personally like to shoot at 24 frames a second, this will give you the most cinematic look. Also when I film on my SLR, the audio is going to come out at this speed as well. So because I shoot my SLR at 24 frames a second, if I change the frame rate after, it will mismatch the voice to the footage. Now 24 frames a second is going to get you the most cinematic footage, as this is what they shoot films in. If you want something slightly smoother, you can shoot at 30 frames a second, but just make sure that everything you're shooting is at 30 frames a second. So what happens if you want your timeline at 24 frames a second, but you've shot at a faster speed? Let's take a look. So now let's set our Mavic Mini to shoot at 24 frames a second and press record. Now the timeline I dropped this footage onto was shot at 24 frames a second and the footage is shot at 24 frames a second. So as you can see we've got some nice smooth footage. If I then set the Mavic Mini to shoot at 25 frames a second but we drop this onto a 24 frames a second timeline we can see this jolt every second, and this is because it's got to drop one of the frames. Now if we get the Mavic Mini to shoot at 30 frames a second, and we drop this onto a 24 frames a second timeline, again, we can see a slight jerk in the footage. And this is because it has to drop 6 frames every second. We're going to try next shooting at 48 frames a second and we're going to drop this onto a 24 frames a second timeline. And as you can see, this is actually quite smooth. This is just because it's dropping 50% of the frames every other one, which is going to be very consistent. Now if we go up higher into 50 frames a second, we can see there is a very slight jerkiness, but it's a lot smoother than the 25 and 30 frames a second. And then if we go into the 60 frames a second, again, we've got something looking fairly smooth. And it's certainly a lot smoother than the 25 frames a second and the 30 frames a second examples. So if you know you're going to have a 24 frames per second timeline, it's a good idea to shoot at 24 frames a second or 48 frames a second. Now the reason for this is that 48 is a multiple of 24, so it's easy for the software to do the maths and work out how to fit it on the timeline. Okay guys, this is a lot of numbers and it's a bit boring, so I'm just going to add this footage of a lemur that I shot earlier. Okay, let's continue. Don't judge me. So guys, we've seen if we've had the wrong frame rate, it can negatively affect our footage. We can either accept this or change the frame rate to match our sequence. Now I've done this in Adobe Premiere Pro because it's easy to see the frame rates here. However, I will show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve as well. So we can click on our sequence here and then press sequence, sequence settings and then we can see we're set at 23.976 frames per second. So what I can do now is select everything I want to change, right click it and go to modify and go to interpret footage. From here we can click assume this frame rate and then there we can put in 23.976 and press OK. So now we can see they've all got the same frame rate. Now this should clear up any jitters we have in our footage. So the worst one was a 25 frames per second. If I drop this back onto the timeline and play it through now, we can see it's nice and smooth. 
So there we go. So again, if we drop on 30 frames a second again, we'll be able to see it's playing through nice and smoothly. Now what I'll do is I'll drop uh, the 48 frames per second above that and the 60 frames a second above that. So once I've dropped them all on top of each other, we can see the higher frame rates are going to be playing back at a slower speed, which will actually increase the length of the footage. And if we play it back, you'll see it plays back in slow motion. Now if you compare that to the 24 frames per second footage, we can see a significant difference, and it's actually over double the speed. To do this in DaVinci Resolve, go to File, Project Settings, and then just check that the frame rate is at 23.976, and press OK. Once we've done that, we can select all the footage we want to change the frame rate of, right click it, and then press Clip Attributes. From here, we can drop down the video frame rate and change it to 24 frames a second and press OK. Now they'll all fit the timeline perfectly. If we drop the file that's 25 frames a second down first, we can see it plays nice and smoothly with no jitterness at all. So once we've taken this all into account, we can see that if we don't have audio in our timeline, it doesn't matter too much which frame rate we shoot our videos at, because we can just adapt them to the frame rate of our timeline afterwards. We just have to bear in mind that if our sequence is 24 frames per second and we shoot at a faster frame rate, we'll get slow motion footage, which may be desirable. So if you do want slow motion footage, shooting at a higher frame rate is a good idea. However, if you do want to shoot at real time, 24 frames a second will be the best for a cinematic look. If you just want some ultra smooth footage, shooting at 30 frames a second will do you just fine. It's also worth pointing out that if you are shooting for a 30 frames a second timeline, but if you shoot at 60 frames a second, because it's double that, it will still give you smooth footage, whether you use it slow motion or not. And if you're not sure whether you want your footage to be full speed or not, you can shoot at 48 frames a second, and that way it will fit nicely onto your timeline, and if you do want to slow it down, you'll still have slow motion footage at half the speed. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, giving it a thumbs up is a huge help to me, and I hope to see you in the next one.